This is part five in our series of lectures on section 3.2 on equivalence relations. And in this lecture, we're going to look at another example of equivalence classes, and uh, we're going to apply it to the set of integers modulo m. So recall um, in an earlier section, we wrote the following definition. If m is a fixed natural number and x and y are any two integers, we say x is congruent to y modulo m, provided x minus y is divisible by m. In this particular lecture, we're going to use this notation to refer to the name of the above relation. And so this is going to mean that x is congruent to y modulo m. Now, in the lecture that I referred to earlier, uh, we proved the following interesting theorem. If m is a fixed natural number and x and y are any two integers, then x is congruent to y modulo m if and only if x and y have the same remainder upon division by m. So what do I mean by having the same remainder upon division by m? That refers back to the division algorithm. And here I'm recalling it for you the way it's applied in this current situation. If we fix a natural number m, then for every integer x, there exists unique integers q and r, such that x can be written as mq plus r, and r satisfies these inequalities. And that number r is called the remainder of x upon division by m. So what we're saying here in the theorem up here is that if you look at x and y separately, then they're going to be congruent to y modulo m, um, precisely if the r comes out the same when we divide x by m and y by m separately. So that result is going to make it very easy for us to show that this relation is actually an equivalence relation, and it will also make it easy to identify what are the corresponding equivalence classes. So here's the main theorem that we're going to consider. Let m be a natural number, then this relation defines an equivalence relation on the set of integers, and the equivalence classes are exactly these. There are exactly m di distinct equivalence classes, and they're determined by the numbers 0, 1, all the way up to m minus 1. So in order to prove this, uh, first of all, we want to prove that it's an equivalence relation. We have to show it's reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. In order to do all of those, I'm going to make use of the fact that two integers are congruent modulo m if and only if they have the same remainder upon division by m. So put your video on pause and see if you can at least write down the formal proof um, that the relation is reflexive. So here's the proof that the relation is reflexive. If we give ourselves an integer x, we have to show that x is related to itself. Well, obviously it has the same remainder as x has the same remainder as x does upon division by m. So according to the previous theorem, um, x is congruent to x modulo m. And so that proves that the relation is reflexive. Now see if you can write down the formal proof that the relation is symmetric. Well, this is really very simple again. If x and y are integers and you assume that x is related to y, you have to deduce that y is related to x. Well, to say that x is related to y is to say that x has the same remainder upon division by m as y does, and that's obviously the same thing as saying that y has the same remainder upon division by m as x does, and therefore y is related to x. That proves that it's symmetric. We'll see now if you can prove that the relation is transitive. I think you'll find that it's just as easy. Here's the proof that it's transitive. If you give yourself three integers and you assume that um, 
The first is related to the second, and the second is related to the third. You have to show that the first one is related to the third one. Well, this says that x and y have the same remainder upon division by m. This one says y and z have the same remainder upon division by m. And therefore, it's clear that x and z have to have the same remainder upon division by m because they both have the same remainder as y does upon division by m. Okay, so that proves that x is related to z, and therefore the relation is transitive. All right, so that completes the proof that the relation is an equivalence relation. We'll be done if we can now figure out what are the distinct equivalence classes of this relation. Um, if you give yourself any integer r satisfying this inequality, and you apply the division algorithm to it by dividing it by m, you'll find this, right? r is equal to 0 times m plus r, and r satisfies this inequalities, and that means that the remainder of r upon division by m is r itself. So that means that each of the integers, so the r's that I'm talking about are these numbers here, every single one of them has a different remainder upon division by m, and therefore each, each of them lies in a different equivalence class. Now, if you give yourself any integer x at all, and you divide it by m, the remainder that you get has to be one of these numbers, and therefore x must lie in one of the equivalence classes of these numbers. So that tells us that the distinct equivalence classes are the equivalence classes of the numbers 0 through m minus 1, and that completes the proof. I'd like to um, introduce some notation that the textbook uses. It's a little bit awkward to use notation like this to refer to an equivalence class and um, to refer to the set of all equivalence classes using that notation. So we're going to use a simpler looking notation. So we're going to use the letter Z sub M to refer to the set of all of the equivalence classes relative to a congruence modulo M. And we'll refer to this set as the set of integers modulo m. So it refers to the set of distinct equivalence classes. And if we give ourselves an integer, instead of referring to its equivalence class uh, relative to this equivalence relation, instead of referring it to it, to it this way, we're just simply going to refer to it as x bar. So the um, connection with the integer m, or the natural number m, is lost in this notation. So we're only going to use this notation if we're really sure that we're clear on um, that it's integers uh, modulo m that we're considering. So let's now make use of the notation that I just introduced and the result of the theorem that we earlier proved to identify what are the distinct equivalence classes um, of congruence modulo 3. So remember, we said that the distinct equivalence classes are, for, for a general m, are the equivalence classes of 0, 1, 2, all the way up to m minus 1. So in this case, m is 3, and so it's the equivalence class of 0, 1, and 2 that give us all of the equivalence classes. And we're, we're using this new notation, 0 bar, 1 bar, and 2 bar, and you just have to remember that we're talking about congruence modulo 3 here. That's, that's lost with the use of this particular bar notation. Now let's see if we can figure out what each of these sets is. Each one of these is a set of, of integers. It's the set of all, uh, for example, 0 bar is the set of all integers that are congruent to 0 modulo 3. And we've seen that the set of integers that are congruent to 0 mod 3 are precisely the ones having the same remainder uh, as 0 does when we divide by 3, in other words, 0. So 0 bar is the set of all integers having a remainder of 0 upon division by 3. 1 bar is similarly the set of integers having remainder 1 upon division by 3, 
and 2 bar is the set of all integers having a remainder of 2 upon division by 3. And so here you see them. 0 bar is what? What are all of the integers that essentially are divisible by 3? They are these. I've, I've separated out the, um, the positive ones from the negative ones. What about 1 bar? What are all of the integers that have a remainder of 1 upon division by 3? 1, 4, 7, 10. If you divide 10 by 3, you get 9 with a remainder of 1. If you divide minus 2 by 3, uh, remember, remainders have to be positive. So minus 2 can be written as 3 times uh, minus 1, that's minus 3, and then you'd have to add 1 to get it back to minus 2, and so the remainder is 1. Similarly, minus 8 is... 3 multiplied by minus 3, that's minus 9, you have to add a 1 to get back to minus 8, and so the remainder is considered to be 1. 2 bar, those are all of the integers having a remainder of 3, uh, having a remainder of 2 upon division by 3, and so, for example, 11, if you divide 11 by 3, uh, it's 3 times 3 is 9, the remainder is 2, um, and that, that's how we got these entries. I want you to notice that if you look at the these equivalence classes, they none of them have any elements in common. Any element that appears on this list cannot appear on either of the uh, of this list or of this list. Um, and furthermore, every single integer lies in exactly one of these equivalence classes. So that gives us what we call a partition of the integers into these equivalence classes. We're essentially identifying all of the elements in this equivalence class. We're saying that relative to this property of congruence modulo 3, every one of these integers can be identified with every other one of them. They all behave essentially in the same way.